first, welcome. Sorry for my voice, but I think like, well, that's my ITB voice. <laughs> so I was totally fit the whole winter, but just like before coming here, that happens. I'm very happy to welcome I go through, oh wait, there it is. So first, there we've Petra from the Ljubljana Tourism Board on the panel, then we have Susanne from Graz Tourism and Nicolas from I Ambassador. And um, before continuing far more with my voice, I lead directly towards for you so that you can start to t tell about your region a bit. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Let me just briefly introduce Ljubljana, the former European Green Capital uh, 2016, uh, still the capital of uh, Slovenia, a charming city who's very into sustainability, having closed uh, uh, center completely for traffic uh, into really sustainable products, meaning that we although we are a capital, are um, very uh, emphasizing our, you know, uh, f heritage, food, culture, and nature, which is, uh, you know, nature in the capital city to uh, market is not the easy uh, thing in the world, but uh, we are um, judging by the uh, um, uh, by the um, feedbacks that we get, doing it uh, okay, um, and um, okay. <laughs> here we go to Graz, which is uh, the next uh, big thing to Ljubljana. <laughs> Thank you, Petra. Um, yes, welcome to Graz. Uh, for those who don't know where this beautiful city is located, it's an Austrian city. It's the second biggest Austrian city in the south of the country. It's about 200 kilometers south south of Vienna and only a, about two hours drive to Ljubljana. Um, it is also a world cultural heritage site. It's a beautiful historic old town, but at the same time, and this is quite unique, what we have together with Berlin, Berlin and Graz are the only cities in Europe wearing two UNESCO titles. One is World Cultural Heritage Site and the other one is City of Design. So this is what we have in common uh, with Berlin. And um, as Ljubljana, we also have this green area in the city, the recreation spot on the mountain. And of course, on the mountain, what we do is not just looking down and enjoying the beautiful view of the city, but also, like you can see here, sit down, enjoy the excellent food, the excellent wine that is being produced in the area around Graz. And I guess I go on to Nick. Thanks, Sue. Yep. Oh, Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good talk. Uh, my name is Nicolas Montemaggi, and I'm the director of marketing of iAmbassador. iAmbassador is the leading network of travel influencers. And uh, what we do, we create uh, campaigns with the brands and destinations in the travel sphere. I'm here today because I'm sitting next to my colleagues here from Graz and Ljubljana, because we will talk to you about also a campaign that we will do together, which goes and cross country, so bet between borders and uh, between uh, Graz and Ljubljana. What I wanted to tell you really quickly about it, uh, uh, another example of a collaboration and cross-border campaign that we did uh, was last year with the Cultural Roots of Europe and a project called Blogging Europe. Uh, we had uh, five influencers from our team that spent uh, seven days uh, between Austria and uh, Serbia along the Transromanica road and uh, this is what you see here, some of the result of the campaign. But what more important was, was to see the collaborations between destinations that in Instead of competing together, they are working together to create, uh, in this case, uh, new tourism routes and the routes that uh, are, uh, you know, there for the users, the tourists, uh, to go on and to experience. Because travel is not about borders, but it's about like experiencing, in this case, Europe and experiencing different destinations. Travelers don't care if they are like, uh, oh, now I'm, you know, in Graz at the border of Graz, and now I'm getting in the border of Ljubljana. They want to experience. It. They want to see how Europe is uh, so similar as well, but also so different. So I think that's the important thing. Yeah, that's a bit it. Pass it to you so, again. Yeah. Very quickly to me again. My name is Melvin. I run Travel Dudes. Travel Dudes is your social travel platform, but it's also like a community for travelers where people can share their travel experiences. And so it's also like an online guidebook. 
behind that, we also have like a team of content creators. So we can produce videos for you from normal videos to 360 videos, for videos for social travel platforms like for Facebook, whatever. Um, we do write articles, we do the live promotion on social media and because of our reach, we have a, a complete reach per month of um, 4 million users, travelers we reach. And because of that reach, we are also like the media partner of the I Ambassador campaigns, which we support with our team, but also with the promotion. For example, and then we had a campaign um, that was actually in Ljubljana last year, which was like for me that really a big step forward in professional travel blogging, because it was not like one blogger going there and blogging for their blog, we actually had like three people there working only for one blog, which was Travel Dudes. And I don't know who, how many already had worked with influencers or travel bloggers. As a travel blogger, normally you do everything. You take the pictures, you do the social media promotion, maybe you do video and you write articles. And it's busy. You are so damn busy doing that. What we did now with having three people in the team, everyone was able to focus only on their job. So we had Jenna, she was writing articles, she was taking um, notes just like for that. We had Greg there who only focused on producing videos and I was also there organizing everything but also handling the social media. And then actually we had a fourth person where we submitted all the content to which was our social media manager so that she could place the content at the right timings so that we get the, um, the biggest um, exposure possible. Well, and the results completely speak for themselves. Um, but what we are doing here now is collaboration between, that's like the title set, between destinations. And I would like very quickly to show you a couple of pictures and if you really watch always the left and right and compare them. After those pictures I will have a question for you. So we've got the food, we've got the olives and really good ham. That's now the time for lunch, you know. Yes, yeah, bad. <laughs> Next one, wine, also not good. Also lunchtime. But you see, it's like no matter which side you, you choose, it, it looks pretty much the same, the locals. Then you also have the city and the beach. So we are talking about travel here. So my question now for you is, if you take all those pictures, did, um, maybe you have recognized which destination that was. Do you have any idea what we were just like talking about? How did, how did that look like? Well, with the olives, it's clear it's not somewhere in Sweden. But could you spot what destination it was? Italy. Yeah, kind of correct. On the left one was Italy, and on the right one was Costa Brava. They pretty much, especially what I really loved, is um, the one with the cities. Um, if you look at that, it's like so, so similar. So you would guess that these two destinations, Emilia Romagna in Italy and Costa Brava in Spain, that they are competitors. That they have to take their travelers from each other. It's wrong. Those two destinations worked together. And that is like what we are trying to discuss and why does that make sense? That's like why yeah, we got this panel together um, and the idea of this was originally from Nicolas, who worked in the past for the Emilia Romagna Tourism Board. Maybe you can just like say what your original idea was. Yeah, basically, like I said before, uh, you saw there are a lot of similarities. Uh, there are a lot of things and maybe there are two underrated destinations, especially travelers coming from the long haul markets. When they think about Europe, like Spain or Italy, they think about, of course, like Madrid, Barcelona, Milan, Venice, Florence. In this case, these two destinations, Costa Brava in Catalonia, Spain and Emilia Romagna in Italy, they are the two destinations which host the number one restaurant of the world and the number two restaurant of the world so they have uh, of course the best food of the world there and uh, it was a natural fit that the both tourist boards they're really active on digital and social media as well they are working a lot actively with influencers worldwide and they got to know each other I used to work uh, for five years there at the tourist board of Emilia Romagna and I since two years I'm with I ambassador but uh, what we pursued was to 
start the collaboration. It took us a, a little bit, almost three years, but that's the time that you need also, you know, to get the politics involved, to get everything and everyone involved, the private partners. And the result, what came out was this Euro food trip. We created basically a new tourism product, so like uh, that even travelers coming from the long haul markets could uh, do as well and uh, experience. So between instead of saying go only to Spain or Costa Brava or experience Italy and Emilia Romagna, experience both destinations. Look how much similar they are, but as well how much different they are. Uh, look at the culture, the people. And to do that, we started uh, with uh, a influencer trip. Uh, we used a bit the influencers, it's bad to say, as a sort of testers, let's say, of this uh, product, how it can work, how real travelers can experience that and uh, the success was really good the two destinations now are not only working together on digital but they are as well together promoting themselves at different trade shows at different uh, wine and food events they have the local cooking schools like you saw before the ladies of the pasta cooking school and also of the cooking school of Catalonia working together and promoting themselves because the history the passion and traditions are pretty much similar but as, as well again so different but uh, let's work together and let's create a new tourism product to let the people experience it. These were a bit the results of the Eurofood trip uh, concerning the influencers involved in the seven days campaign. So there were six travel influencers from the markets that both destinations are interested in. There was Germany, there was France, and there were like the UK and the North American market. And that's also a bit what the content that they created was. So there was as well one video that was created to highlight and to show what the campaign was about. Uh, the video was uh, nominated as well in the first, I think, edition of the Cannes travel video competition. Luckily, we didn't win because we are not French. No, I'm joking. But uh, uh, it was a real honor for us to be there. And that's also the both destinations are promoting themselves as well on the different social platforms, not only their own destination, but as well the partner, let's say, cooperator destination too. And uh, yeah, that's uh, also because what they realized was that us is better than me. So why working alone only? Why don't we look for people that have similarities together and we try to do projects and campaigns together like the one we are now undergoing with uh, Graz and Ljubljana? Well, and um, with the, you always have to see the collaboration between the tourism boards. I mean, who is really the guys doing that? I mean, it's the traveler. A traveler is going from, um, especially coming to Europe from one destination to another. For example, with um, Emilia Romagna, what is so popular there is the motor belly, right? Yeah. So what is like, what do you think of that? Yeah, that's exactly because uh, now I do a bit of advertising of the region, but Emilia Romagna, for those who don't know, is the home of Ferrari, Lamborghini, Ducati, Pagani, Maserati, and could continue for Ever. And uh, but the thing is, the region is home of the Italian Motor Valley. But they, what they are working now on is to collaborate with other destinations within Europe. Is are they located in Britain or in Germany, like for example BMW, Audi, and uh, uh, Porsche, or even in Britain, to create a macro product in Europe about motorsports? Because people now are interested in themes and in niches. It's not only anymore about general travel, but it's to create new products that are already under our nose, we just need to put them together and start to work together. Yeah, because the, the traveler, like you said, he's, uh, he goes to the Ferrari Museum and then he travels north, he might stop in Graz and then he goes to um, Munich and to visit the BMW mu Museum there. So there are no borders and I think that's like, um, like when we started this campaign, um, and we had another presentation a couple of months ago and I was just listening and was like very close to tears, I must say, because you have to see the, the importance of that. Um, normally, I don't get any political at all, but you see everywhere right now, we are all travelers, I guess, here. Like 95% of us sitting here had a travel experience, which was like changed your character open-minded going to each other and um, what you see right now in Europe in the US is that we start building borders again and I think we as travelers we have a very very big importance of breaking those rules again and I think um, this was not just like a simple nice campaign with good results there's a far bigger bigger meaning behind that because if we get the people to travel around the borders 
Well, that is like what all is travel about. And that is also very important that we have like tourism boards um, who are that open, who say, and who are very similar, but they say, yeah, we work together. Um, you have cities like Barcelona, Amsterdam, they can't handle tourists anymore, over tourism. The question is, how do you deal with that? Um, there are statistics which go up that there will be more and more travelers all the time. So still, like there are destinations who would love to have more travelers, but especially you two, I mean, you already know that you might have to change your strategy in future. So what do you do already? Do you plan this far that you say, okay, what can we do um, when travelers are coming? Well, um, we are now as a tourist board going through a bit of a, a change in a strategic way because when I started, and that's oh my god, centuries ago, um, there was this typical workshop situation and trade show and um, the, the travel journalist who came and got a press release and printed my photos and all that stuff. Now it's totally different because with all the social media coming in and all the digital online, it's not us who are giving the message because. We are, for travelers, a tourist board is totally irrelevant, totally. It's, it's good for opening hours and itineraries, but if you're looking for inspiration, you're not going to a tourist website. So what we started last year is that we actively approach bloggers to come and to tell stories, and that we enable them um, to write about the experiences. We are not provider anymore. We need to be enabler, we need to be engager, we need to be a source of inspiration. And that's a very difficult way to go because we tend to think in silos and in boxes within the company. So we really have to break that up and become a modern DMO. And that's what we are trying to do. And this is exactly what we are trying to achieve also with this cool project that we are having with our beautiful neighbor. <laughs> Actually, uh, you guys are keeping us grounded, honestly, because uh, we, did, you know, everyone is talking about their, our uniqueness. Uh, you are teaching us about our similarities. We never thought about how similar we are or we even didn't think that we are competitive, but that we coexist. I mean, we were coexisting ages, you know, we used to be in the, the same Austro-Hungarian state after all, like hundreds of years ago. But uh, the, the, the thing is that we, you are, I mean, the bloggers are showing us what we have to emphasize to other people. Uh, so we, if we listen to you guys, what you are experiencing, what works for you, then we should tell that to the others and not what we think we should tell to the others they should experience, you know. Although we're also aware of the fact that everyone wants to live as local, you know. Uh, but uh, you do that on, on the way, you integrate that into things that, you, that our guests uh, find as appealing. And that's what we are discovering together, you know. And we are really similar, as you can see on the pictures. Yeah. And, and the cities also, they have this similarity in the offer. We have this beautiful old town. We are focusing on, well, not focusing, we have the food. We have one of the best food in the world, of course. We have the wine, we have the sports. So it's similar, but still so different. And what makes the difference? I think it's to people. Um, you will come across the most friendly people I've ever met in Ljubljana. They are open-hearted, they're good fun, they're good sports. And um, this is what, will, what you will keep in, in your memory, in your heart. And again, if you come to Graz, you might experience the same thing, but in a probably a little bit of other cultural twist. But again, it's open, it's welcoming, and with tr within two hours, you find two places that are fantastic but so different in a way and I, I think that's the attraction who in the audience who has been to Lopiana oh yes okay who has been to Graz who oh. has been who, <laughs> awesome who has been to both cities awesome okay, okay. 
like when we started the presentation, like putting it together, and the two nice ladies presenter came with those pictures, and I took a look at that, and I said that earlier, if I would have gotten the left, the left picture first, and five minutes later the other one, I m m might have said, hey, it's the same city, unless you spot the river, what's going on. But both cities have hills. Um, they've got the old town and well, also the other things. So it's like so, so similar. Um, yeah, I mean, it was fascinating to see. And still you have them working together. And that's for me like, wow, I really get a shiver right now. <laughs> yeah, we're working together because we're bordering each other. And this is an artificial border yes. because but our uh, our um, um, province name in a Slovenian language is Stajarska, and there is a part of Slovenia which is still called Stajarska. So that pro that is proof enough that we belong together, and this is not an artificial product we made up. It just makes perfect sense. But it is on the same. I mean, on the other side is like we are Slavs, Slavic nation. <laughs> They're a Germanic nation, you know, Austrians. So it's uh, it's like you said, it's the people that really make uh, the difference and other emphasizes, even though the nature was really grateful to us and we did uh, nice things out of our uh, cultural uh, heritage. Heritage, but um, um, actually, we we uh, we don't just cooperate together. We actually visit each other and are uh, looking for not sim uh, similarities but also different things that we ha that we can learn from each other you know and that's the really valuable thing that uh, why the you know borders don't exist uh, for a long long time already you know? yeah, and I have to say the idea of these joint blogger trip came up when we as the Graz tourist office office visited Lub Ljubljana on a company excursion picture up picture up <laughs> and I started to talking to Nina and I said might be a cool idea if we do something together and we are sister cities as well political wise yes <laughs> yes we are <laughs> so um, that was the birth of the idea and then Ljubljana tourism visited us in uh, December picture down and um, yeah we started planning and we started you know, getting and, and gathering the ideas and um, now we're quite far ahead already and we're really, really looking forward to it. I, I've got a question, like when you've met twice now, was it just the tourism boards or did you also include the politicians? No politicians. No politicians. <laughs> so first day without the politicians. We but, well, obviously they need to be convinced as well. And I guess that's the toughest part. You had that in the past as well. I mean, very important to work with the politicians, but they have different things to th think about. Definitely, but we uh, we did. I mean, at least in our case, we made aware of uh, our authorities, the mayor and the office, are very well aware of the fact that we went there and what uh, what was going on and this and that. But it is definitely true what you're saying because without the support that we have on a muni mu in our case municipality level, we could n not in a million years develop tourism the way as we are developing it. Because if you don't have a top-down uh, support you can't really do much you know first of all is foundings second of all and even more important is the understanding of the of the authorities that they support you so you can really develop your products but on the other side you also have to involve uh, very much uh, all stakeholders like friends from the region but also your locals into tourism so they don't they don't think that tourism is something going on in a separate clouds in their city uh, they need to be everyone needs to be integrated so you, you have to listen to both sides you know not just what you guys are telling us what we should promote or uh, consider as DNA of our destination but also how locals feel when tourists are coming this is really really important to us you know cool um, are there any questions in between raise your hands anytime when you have specific questions please no question okay happy people um, when you work with tourism boards and what what is so important then what how do you deal with that how do you get started when you have like I mean like getting both people both politicians parties onto one side on one one um, table to work together 
Well, I think what uh, Petra said is correct. Like, uh, you need the involvement of all levels, of course. Of course, uh, the ideas that uh, also to put us together came because the meeting of the, you know, both tourist boards, or in the case of Emilia Romagna and Costa Brava as well, both uh, staff team in the, of the digital team, they were together with the influencers and they went also on the trip to the other destination in order to discover how they work, how they do fam trips, like a literally exchange of information. It seems really natural and easy to everyone, but uh, I don't see a lot of people doing that, you know, because it takes that extra step that you need to go there and start doing things together. And then you just open your eyes and say, oh, there are so many possibilities to work together. And then, like Petra said, even like the private stakeholders of the region, they start working together. Like Sue said, we as a destination and DMOs, we are facilitators and enablers. So that's the role. I think uh, DMOs uh, in the past years had the role more of protagonists rather than of enablers and facilitators and now like we said online is basically allows kind of everyone to tell the story or to publish something about the destination and to make it available to to the world and so it's really important that you see also what the users and travelers and tourists think about your destination and not uh, that uh, you for sure think oh they will for sure do what I think they I like you know so how does that work when working with the travel bloggers how can the travel bloggers have that experience well of course like uh, there is a lot of trust involved as well and uh, you need to work also with people who have a real influence influence and who are like professionals in that and uh, as well like um, what they write is a bit the, the people that read them or read their content they see themselves in the mirror a bit you know like I'm that kind of traveler as well but I think the most important thing was when we started as well when I used to work at the tourist board to work with influencer was like Sue said before our websites were pretty much institutional so there was not real the information about what you can experience and uh, the translation in the foreign languages was not always the best one, you know? So it's uh, as well institutional. And uh, so while working with influencers, with people that come from that market, you know, that know their readers, that write in that language, you're able to hit better, you know, the travelers and users online. Because an important thing is as well, everyone thinks that internet, you know, you do campaigns, it's a faster return on the investment, it happens really quick. Everyone books a trip to Graz or Ljubljana. No, you have to think long term as well because what we saw, we still have articles and content from five years ago where people actually book activities by reading articles that have like five that are five years old. That's because it's a quality content, a quality piece of article and also photos or videos and images and um, Google itself for example in the search stream of that language like puts it to the traveler. So when the traveler was like what should I do in Bologna, what comes up is like based on the language like the articles of the influencers we work with because they tell a story and an experience about what you can do in the destination. And not to forget, for example when I've, I've been to Ljubljana, I've seen those pictures now of Graz, I want to go to Graz now. Hopefully I get invited. But the thing is, my next trip is already planned somewhere else. So even if I liked the photos of Graz now, it might take a while until I go there. Um, well, I'm travel crazy, so probably it's still like this year, but for the normal travelers, for the normal people, they have a holiday only once or twice a year. So it might be that it's next year, right? Yeah. Um, coming back to the collaboration of the um, Costa Brava in Emilia Romagna with the influencers, um, when I how long was it? It was seven days. Seven days. So, yeah. um, what did the bloggers do in Costa Brava? Was the itinerary similar in Italy or did um, both tourism boards pick out specific things where they said oh we want to push that and uh, we want to be a bit different than they are? Or? Well the focus was food of course so they were like uh, highlighted the main specialities of both destinations and as well like the best restaurants but what is important to remember also when working with influencers or doing like uh, farm trips or campaigns I know it, it sounds really easy but but uh, you have to think to do stuff that the normal traveler can do as well. You cannot do like crazy things that then nobody can reply or cannot book or cannot do. So it needs all to be linked together. So what they did, the, the itinerary was, uh, let's say, pretty similar but different because, uh, of course, the products and uh, what had, there was to offer was really different. Okay. Um, for you now, 
those two destinations are going to collaborate also with influencers with the campaign in the future. So you already like building an, a kind of an itinerary already in your mind or as a concept of promotion. I mean, in the end, that's what the bloggers are used to. It's not just like inviting some travelers. I mean, obviously, you use them to reach the travelers. What are your aims? Maybe you start. Actually, there are several aims, but uh, of course, to give a shout out what can be experienced in uh, in Ljubljana. But also, if we go back to the uh, to, to the uh, title of this uh, um, of our talk, is uh, that we actually why should we DMOs work together? Is definitely to become the MMO, so destination managing marketing organization. To, that means that, I mean, we, we really don't, uh, we, we, we are all into attracting travelers to new ones to come, to experience new things, uh, uh, the, the ones who already have been to come back and to experience other things. So this is the aim to, to tell to people what else is too appealing to experience, but also to manage these flows for people not to stay on one spot or just in one part of the city but also in the region which you did the great job back then uh, and uh, all, but, but to manage these flows also to go to the wider region such as two hours uh, drive away the beautiful city of Graz you know which uh, normally people that would uh, primarily come to Ljubljana wouldn't consider you know but it's a great great addition you know but and last but not least the aim is also that you guys tell us uh, or try um, help us discover what exactly what exciting do we already have at the destination and we don't know it yet for example for our experience is from the last time you guys were in Ljubljana we didn't even consider I mean we took it for granted that we we have a stand up paddling on the river we do it as locals but okay but then you discovered it as a as a touristical things and now the providers actually went into the story with us so now we have sort of a guiding through the stand up paddle on the Ljubljana river which is a river that goes through the capital city of one of the european states you know you, this is not something that you can really experience everywhere you know well i think what was um, they are very um, successful is that you trusted us and that we trusted you yes. and that we had this communication so um, I always have that example, if you take me into a museum, I will fall asleep. <laughs> I won't tweet about that. But if you let me go skydiving, I will be tweeting while I fall down. <laughs> um, so Good hint. when we get, so very important was we knew that you, your aim was to show obviously the good food in Lobiana, but also that there's some awesome region around it. I knew that and I was creating the itinerary, so for me it was very important to get that mix. And I was like picking out those things where I knew our team can really have fun and enjoy that trip and then obviously promote that further. Um, coming back to Graz, like, um, yeah, how, how do you deal with the situation with influencer in, um, would, do you mind if Ljubljana have a similar itinerary like yours or would you like separate it? Does it matter at all? Well. We do have similar projects because it's under the theme food and design, so it will be these two subjects that we're touching. So that will be the, 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 the link between the two of us. But I would like to come back to your question, what that means for us as a tourist board, working together with Ljubljana. And then we also have, um, I have different aims in my mind. It's first of all, get the, the word out of, for Graz through the bloggers. And the second thing is to create awareness of travelers or of tourism in Graz, because that's sometimes a very difficult um, message to get across that we are a touristic city. Locals don't identify them as a tourist destination. And we need to have the tourism awareness to, to continue having the support of the locals and of the government of the municipalities and for that we are involving our biggest daily newspaper for that trip so there will be they will be with us one or with one or two excursions or whatever we are doing so they see that we are working in a modern way to get the message for crowds across the world and that's for us that's a very important thing to get the the the, the power also from the local people and the local official 
in the end, as a tourism board, you also work for your partners, the tour operators and the hotels. When you approach them now and say, hey, we work with Ljubljana, they might say, oh, wow, well, now the people are going to stay in their hotels. How do you deal with that situation? Well, um, we have a handful of hotels who are open-minded. And uh, when I presented the project, they would just say, hey, that's cool. And I even got rooms for free. <laughs> yeah. No, really. No, they, that's not a problem. They, they think it's a cool idea because it's really, Slovenia, Ljubljana is so close. If we go there for a day trip, it's, it's really nothing unusual if Ljubljana is mentioned with Graz in one blog post or whatever. So that's, I think that's not a problem at all. So in the end, it's also similar like when someone from um, North America comes, they visit Rome and they visit Venice anyway. So that's the natural connection, right? And yeah, it's, it's, like it's actually the other way around. If we, you know, approach to them what they can do in the wider region, they would stay, they would prolong their staying. It's what we aim to do, you know. So that's why the, you know, there is no issue about that with the hoteliers or, or everyone. Because, yeah, they can do either a day trip to the destination because of that stay one or two nights longer. Uh, or uh, they would uh, consider going, yes, to Graz and staying there, but because of that also stay uh, longer in Ljubljana and, and, um, um, and explore the area there, you know. Any questions? There is one. Wait. We get the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Just asking, uh, what's the process of uh, finding the right bloggers, influential bloggers, to represent um, what you, the message that you want to represent for your itinerary? Because different bloggers obviously can reach different types of markets. So, yeah. Yeah, basically, I come in as I ambassador, as a partners of uh, this uh, collaboration and campaign. Uh, what we do, we basically sat down with uh, both Graz and Ljubljana, and of course, you decide what are the key markets that you want to reach, and of course, what are the key themes. So in this case, it was about the culture, the food, and uh, so then uh, we collaborate with the best travel online influencers in the world, and we have uh, our own database of them, and based on that we research for the best uh, candidates and best bloggers to work with. Then of course we submit like the suggested influencers or bloggers in this case to both destinations and we start to work together and what we do we work together with them as well on the itinerary so that we have the right people that know exactly what they're gonna do because sometimes it happens often that uh, destinations or brands or hotels or whatever invite like influencers without knowing even like exactly what they write about or they just come there and then they have a complete different itinerary the deliverables have not been set up together and so it comes out a total mess and it's a total loss of money as well i don't know if that answered in part yeah <laughs> But maybe from the destination uh, side, of course, we look for the reach. Uh, we definitely look for reputation. We know that uh, there are, you know, all uh, different kinds of uh, bloggers. We also uh, search through the previous uh, um, uh, posts, uh, blogs, or, uh, content, and so forth to see if we are compatible. All these, but the, the most important thing is. Of course, you have to have a little bit of luck as well to find the right one. But the most important thing is what Melvin said before. Uh, when you find the partners to work with, you should stick to them because it's uh, the trust that you're building and uh, they're helping you, you know, expanding and we, uh, expanding uh, your, uh, your knowledge about your or our knowledge about our destination. And that's what, uh, you know, really counts. Are you from a destination tourism board? What do you do? Okay, any more questions? No more questions, okay. Was that one? No. Um, <clears throat> well, cool. Um, <laughs> I think they're hungry, you know, so. Yeah, me as well. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, working, when, I, when you see the, the two cities, like out of a traveler perspective, I guess there's from the infrastructure, how does that work? Is, are there already routes like um, by, by train, by bus, or how can the traveler get from one city to the other? 
That's pretty easy. I mean, we're well connected through trains. They run every, I think, every two hours. We are well connected through the new service of Flixbus. Um, we have our local bus company who who is going back and forth. So it's it's. Yeah, it's it's not it's uh, exactly, and it's not a big deal. So it's very easy to to go from one city to the other. Awesome. When you then have the campaign and you get a couple of bloggers into those destinations, um, how do you make use um, what they produce? What what do you do? Do you use the content? Obviously, you share it through your own channels. Um, do the do your partners, the hotels, do they profit from it? Yeah, we do make aware our part. I mean, we, we actually learned that as well from uh, from our tourist guides because they learned from social media that we're working from bloggers and they, of course, told us that they're not happy that they learned from social media and not from us, which is, you know, I said, fair comment. We should be the ones to tell you it's true. So we learned a while back uh, about that. So now we are making aware all the stakeholders in the, uh, in the destination that this is going on and that they're really responding because usually these are very positive, enthusiastic, but not usually, I mean, there are very positive, enthusiastic posts uh, about the experiences uh, on the destination and they're using it for them as well because, for example, hotels are very well aware of the fact that they cannot sell the hotel for ages uh, anymore, that they're selling the destination, you know, so uh, this, this helps us, helps all of us. So yes, we, we're happy to tell that upfront now to everyone. Same in Graz, of course, we use our social media outlets and we do a Facebook campaign which starts before the bloggers are coming. So we involve our community also with, you know, asking for tips, what, what souvenirs would you bring home? Where are the best photo spots in the city? What are your most favorite bars? So this would be a little documentation that the bloggers will get when they come to Graz. So we do that through our Facebook. Of course, we, um, we encourage our partners to share it, to post it, to distribute, distribute it in. Even if it's not trendy anymore to go on our website, we created a whole, a, a very nice site where we put all our blog posts on that site, and that goes directly to the bloggers' website. So we're taking them away from our site, but double content is no good, as we've learned. <laughs> so awesome. we do that. Very, very good point because I must say, especially when I look, like. In the past, without the digital media, what did people do? They went to the tourist office and got the information. I must say, now as a traveler, when I came here to Berlin, my family's arriving today, I wanted to show them something, and I was on, the, on, a, well, on that tourism website. <laughs> I didn't find anything. I was like shocking. I was like, wow, I think there's a lot of... Well, there is the trust of the traveler to the tourism offices, but uh, most of the websites, they simply suck, I must say. So, like, using this kind of content is, which is out there helps you a lot. I mean, in the end, you build a um, relationship with the bloggers. They could even help you to produce content for your website yourself, right? Um, when you include those blog posts from the bloggers, where, where do you find that on your homepage? It's on the... It's on the main page. So if you go to our website, it's on the first page in a big uh, slider. And it says, this is what bloggers say about Graz. And then wow. you click on that, and then you get a whole page with all the blog posts, one in German and, on the, and one in international languages. And it's really nice, because it, it, it's nicely done. And um, we gathered a lot of blog posts already. And obviously, and we can be self-confident, the city is impressive because we only get very 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 positive comments yeah and it's the same for us we even create storyfy out of the uh, you know all the posts and it's basically what others are we're, we're just you know putting together what others are saying about the destination you know so it's uh, it works really well even the local media are really looking into it Petra if your tourism board, your social media manager suddenly would tweet something about Graz. Would you like freak out or maybe um, a politician would see that and get you in trouble? Um, 
what do you expect out of that campaign? No, I, I wouldn't freak out at all, but uh, I would, uh, you know, they, they know that I would say, well, from Ljubljana to Graz, there is two hours and then you can go on. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, you, and that's obviously what you will um, talk about before the campaign, because it's tough. I mean, these are the parts and obviously it's you need to promote a tiny bit. Obviously, you can't do it also too much, right? It's true, but it's also our, we really, really take seriously the part that we believe we, uh, we, we need to work on, which is the um, education, you know, on both levels. We have to educate locals uh, what, what, you know, tourism, integration of tourism actually means, but we also have to uh, tell to our superiors all the time what the new trends in tourism are. And uh, we, are luck, we are lucky that they do understand and if we are promoting the region, that they will stay longer. But it's not everywhere like that. We're aware of the fact, but we're telling everyone, well, you have to say to the same people, not thousand, million times the same thing, and then eventually they will start to understand, you know? Okay. Um, questions in between? Okay. Hmm. I think with these collaborations, it's a lot about communication with each other, especially in this stage where you're preparing it. Um, have you already like a specific date when the um, campaign starts, a specific season? Yeah, we have the date. It's from the 22nd of May until the 27th, I think. And um, I will meet again with my um, counterpart in, in uh, Ljubljana end of this month and we really go into the program details. We have to um, fix the hashtags because we're still discussing about hashtags. And so we really we need to go into details now and, and the rough program and from then it's up and running. Very exciting, and it's very soon. So, like, um, well, people, you can find definitely then out, I guess, through the I Ambassador blog um, with the hashtag so that people can also follow. Um, so, you connect it, um, yeah, like the, the Costa Brava and the Emilia Romagna, and um, you also run the Social Travel Summit. So, how do you, which is also a platform where the tourism boards connect? What I find very, very interesting, and again, people could say, everything I do I keep it for myself because it's my success but like I'm always like extremely fascinated on conferences like this like TBEX like the social travel summit you get like tourism boards um, it's really sharing their knowledge helping each other which is like wow yeah, basically the Social Travel Summit is an event that uh, will this year be held in Austria, in Tyrol, uh, 19 to 20 of September, and it's an event organized by iAmbassador, which brings together the best uh, online travel influencers from the world, together also with the DMOs and brands of the travel industry that are the most active on the digital side, but as well the ones that want to learn more and to work together with influencers. And uh, during these two days, uh, there are not presentations only to say, look how great we are, how big we are, but it's literally a collaboration together and discussions about how can we improve, how can we do better, what we did till nowadays, about how can we expand it even more and uh, create even a bigger impact, a bigger success and uh, better stories as well. So you also, um, you, you get the people into one room, right? Yeah. With, uh, um yeah, the think tank. Yeah, we have also like a session where we bring together literally the influencers and the brands and the destinations, and they start to discuss on different topics about you know how to evolve together. What are the you know hot points, let's say like that, that uh, need to be solved? And uh, yeah, that's it basically. So one of the topics could be. I mean, um, we 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 had Emilia Romagna Costa Brava now. Um, you had experiences with that. We have the next experience. So one of the topics could be. Um, um, you, you have the think tank reports where you help the bloggers and, and yeah. the industry. Everyone can download it for free. Um, and so one of the think tanks could handle the, the topic, the collaboration. So that you sit on a table, that you say, okay, this is like what we've done. And this is something which completely went wrong. And these might be the solution so that you further go further. And you would obviously also have no problem to make that public thing, right? Yeah, I mean, like it's uh, like uh, these are the first collaborations. And of course, course you need also to be aware that something cannot go good but of course it's also a part of a little investment that you do because the digital sphere is uh 
pretty new also, let's say, in this field, and you need to test and to do things because we don't have the right answer always, you know? So you need to try and invest a little bit as well, and then by time improving, of course, the results uh, are there and will be there also in the long term. Do you see a specific, a specific risk where you think, oh, that might be a bit critical? in this campaign like what do you think which might go wrong which needs to be which is like hard to handle is there anything no honestly i don't i really okay. don't because i really believe that we should you know show our true selves so uh, you know every uh, no i really don't no <laughs> awesome same with me i awesome. mean there's yeah i agree okay um where do you see um, this kind of collaboration maybe in five or ten years? Oh, it's uh, an interesting question. I think um, this will be state of the art then. So we, are, we, I think, if I look into the future, my ideal way of dealing with that subject would be that it's the times are gone where you stick to your own country, because. From my perspective, from the location of my city, it would be easy to do it with Zagreb. It would be easy to do it with um, Budapest or a smaller city in Hungary. So we are in the southeastern part of Central Europe. So we are the gateway to all those wonderful destinations in Croatia, in Slovenia, in Montenegro, Kosovo. So it's all it, it's all feasible, and this is. Although we are looking into the future, we are going back in history. And that would be my dream, that we create a, a huge cooperation throughout Southeast Europe. Where do you see yourself I, with that collaboration in future? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. But uh, I think that this is happening already now because we are creating this uh, region, uh, or, or, or uh, really, um, how should I say, uh, really uh, intensively, uh, for simple reason. Even now that the um, uh, travelers are coming from the other continents, are staying longer, would like to squeeze in as as much as possible into their. Uh, so they're in so much into visiting many uh, uh, regions. We just, like I said before, we just need to work really hard on managing their flows, where to go and what their experience would be that, that we believe it's going to be the best for them, you know? Um, apart from the DMOs, could you imagine something similar with brands like Ferrari and Audi or Porsche better. Yeah, yeah, of course, like we said, uh, well, the DMOs is partly involved. If we think about the museums, like creating a route of, uh, like we said before, of the Motor Valley and that, yeah, definitely. Any more questions? There's a question, okay. Yeah, second question. <laughs> yeah, she's good. Thanks. The two of you are sister cities. And I mean, if we're talking about in Europe, I'm just wondering, is there, are there alternative pools of funding for programs like this so that marketing organizations don't need to pull from their own budget, budget for, but maybe from an EU uh, budget or, as I said, the sister cities budget? Uh, well, we have no sister cities budget, unfortunately. But this is what I was, would like to discuss with Nick because I'm sure that there must be EU fundings for cross-country campaigns, so this we have to still find out. Is there someone out. from the EU government here? <laughs> no, basically you need, uh, sorry, to set uh, something in motion and a standard and some examples. So, you know, it's like when we said before, uh, not to be mean with the people on top of us, but they also are busy in doing other things, you know? So you need to let them show clearly what the things are. They need to take quick decisions. They are decision makers. So by doing this, we are going down there, you know, in case, in this case, the European cities of marketing and showing, look what we did, you know, look what this collaboration started to do. And maybe that gives ideas to bring like fundings or, you know, a new concept. Otherwise, there are definitely the uh, interreg projects from European Union are uh, focused exactly on that. But we are really goal oriented and focused, and it takes too much time. So we rather go with our own not uh, budgets, goals, and uh, go quicker. But uh, it's we are thinking also on a larger scale to involve you know this 
interregions and uh, are trying to pull out some European funds as well. But like I said, it's taking a lot of time. And in the meantime, we're doing these kind of things. Any more questions? Who is from a tourism board here right now? From DMO? More, okay. Um, could you imagine in a similar collaboration? Hi, uh, I'm coming from Turkey. Uh, yeah, we are organizing a, a destination management organization between three or four cities now, in fact, uh, in the Marmara region. Uh, it's, it's also, uh, we had a lot of immigration uh, to Turkey. So I, I think our uh, destination management organization will tell a story about immigration, about uh, the cities and the immigration they took in the history. So it, it will have a history story also uh, attached to food. Awesome. Uh, I come from Trentino uh, in the north of Italy and uh, there could be possible uh, really maybe our main uh, main seat Trentino marketing could uh, begin a sort of collaboration with Austria and also with Ljubljana. That's uh, really interesting. I will forward this uh, and idea. And also with Emilia Romagna, which is And also with Emilia, Emilia Romagna. Needs, yeah. So that's awesome, cool. <laughs> okay. Would you like to say something to that as well? Like. Um, hello, I'm from a South Bavarian destination called uh, Kimgau um, and I'm very aware that we maybe could collaborate with um, an Austrian destination, so like in Tyrol or something, so um, to adapt this idea, yeah, fine. Very nice, cool. Any more questions? Three minutes left, okay. <laughs> um, hi, I'm from Greece. And I would like to ask you if you would consider also working with uh, destination management companies or only with uh, organizations, official organizations of the city? I think, uh, yeah, it's uh, everyone. Like, I mean, like, uh, who has a story to tell or something like, uh, let's say, to sell as well or to offer to the tourists that's more than welcome to collaborate, yeah. Any more questions? If you were just like to shy now to have the microphone in your face and shout out loud, um, we'll be at the Travel Dudes Iron Bazaar door stand, which is just like 10, 15 meter, meters over there. Um, you can grab us for the next um, probably 15, 20 minutes. So if you have questions, you're obviously invited to come and just like talk to us directly again. Well, then, um, thanks a lot for attending and enjoy ITB. Thank you.